Thanks, Grady. Uh, let's have a look at how water rockets produce thrust. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a conventional rocket or a water rocket, your life is governed by the thrust equation, which is derived from Newton's second law. And here it is in its simplified form. Uh, over here, you've got the thrust or the force that the rocket produces to propel it upwards. And that's made out of two terms. This one is the momentum thrust, and that's just the mass flow rate. In other words, the rate at which the mass of the water or air flows through the nozzle times the velocity uh, at which it exits. Uh, and over here is the pressure thrust, and that relates to the exit pressure versus the ambient pressure. So while the rocket is sitting on the pad, pressurized, uh, this term is zero because there's no flow out of the uh, nozzle. And so we end up with the pressure of the in inside versus the outside times the nozzle's cross-sectional area. And that's the actual the force of the rocket trying to get off the pad. So when you release the rocket, the uh, momentum thrust comes back into play. Uh, the compressed air is pushing the water out through the nozzle. Uh, and the water comes out at probably about a one-tenth the speed of sound for regular types of rockets, which is quite low. Uh, but the mass flow rate is high because, it, uh, because the water is so heavy. Now, when the water runs out and the compressed air starts coming out, the mass flow rate really drops because uh, air is so much lighter than water. Uh, but the exit velocity uh, gets very high because the air comes out at the speed of sound. So as it turns out, during the air phase only, you get about two thirds the amount of thrust as you get with the water phase. And is in fact why water rockets use water for improved performance. Now, all of this is an oversimplification and in real life, it's a little bit more complicated than that, uh, simply because you've got a finite volume inside of the rocket. And as uh, soon as you release it, the pressure starts dropping and so does the uh, force that it generates. And so you end up with a decayed thrust curve like here. Now. Uh, let's have a look at a couple of examples of the water rocket. Uh, this one's a low pressure one. This would be a typical one that you'd launch and it produces about a hundred newtons uh, peak thrust. And this one over here is a high pressure one uh, if you really crank up the pressure. And this one generates about two and a half thousand newtons peak thrust. So that's a lot more. And here's what happens when you crank up the pressure too much. Okay, back to you, Grady, before we blow something else up.